white culture isn't actually the most dominant culture in the United States. The most dominant culture that spans across many different cultures, probably one of the fewest cultures that, that is affected by it would be uh, Asian cultures. <clears throat> and that would be consumerism. Consumerism rules us. Sometimes black people will say that white people have no culture. And that's somewhat true because consumerism is our culture, but it's mostly taken over black culture as well. Everything else is just posturing and affectations. The consumerism rules black culture too. It's running just about everything. It seems to be, it's the culture that drives us to do whatever. Whatever is, you know, about buying things. It's kind of why those that try to live off the grid are looked at so poorly by the government. It's because cons consumerism is what drives the economy. So, I was just thinking again about how... And I said this, I think, several years ago in a video. How the, the, the way you think shows in everything that you do. The real you shows in the things you do, not in the things, not in your affectations, not in the way you word things, not in what you say, but it shows in what you do. And you actually can't hide who you are. If someone pays enough attention, they can see who someone really is. The way a person makes decisions in one place will definitely carry over to some of the way they make decisions in other places. Now, every combination of the way that people make decisions and that way of processing information has advantages. So, sometimes one can be, one can initially be viewed as very, very negative and not having much to offer. But if you see them in the right conditions, you'll usually find some sort of almost genius when everything else seems so... The decision-making isn't advantageous for most of the things they deal with in their life. So... But one of the areas that I see it the most is in people's driving. Who you really are shows in your driving. It shows in the things that make you mad. It shows in the amount of patience you have. It shows how courteous you are. It shows your interactions with other people when you are anonymous. That's what it shows. When you're, in, when you're in your car, you're anonymous. Generally, anyway. So, the real you shows. If you purposely start thinking about the way you drive and how courteous you are and how long you wait to let someone know you're going to do something and just a whole slew of things, if you start thinking about that and make changes in those places, you will automatically make changes in other places in your life in those same areas. And it's not some sort of magical thing, it's mainly because you, are, you would have been starting to think about the way that you do things. And the way you make changes is by first noticing something. So, sometimes one wouldn't think to pay attention to those things. But just like, try analyzing, Oh, Try analyzing your driving sometime. But one of the things I really wanted to talk about is how political correctness mixed with extreme diversity is a recipe for disaster. And then add consumerism on top of that, right? 
that is the ultimate in too many rats in a cage syndrome. It's the ultimate in that. That combination is how we will destroy this country from within. It destroys our productivity. See, when you're at your workplace, you, unless you have a very certain kind of job, you can't really be yourself. You got all this diversity training you have to do. Um, you have to, it, people are scared to, uh, not necessarily scared, people don't necessarily think of it as scared, but they're just like, well, I'm not gonna talk about this or this or this or this or this. And the less that we are ourselves, everything about you know con consumerism which which is which in, in a lot of ways is is escapism but everything is gearing towards us losing our creativity because who we are is how we're able to wield our creativity yeah you can be you can you can help a a, jo a workplace make some decisions okay fine but our ability to even make those kinds of decisions is dwindling because of political correctness. When your mind, when that is one of the main things on your mind, I mean, I even saw a video recently by, was it Ted or was it, I uh, uh, can't remember, but I've seen this said before, but now it's really being confirmed, is we don't multitask. Okay, people? We don't multitask. We jump around to different processes. And we can have burnout. And burnout is, in that regard, is kind of at an all-time high now because of political correctness. You have that thing take you know in the background that whole time this uh, oh I better be uh, I better make sure that I don't offend someone <laughs> it, that's not a recipe for uh, a productive workplace a productive uh, just us being productive Now, I like the melting pot uh, analogy for a country. Okay, everyone jumps in and you end up becoming this somewhat a homogenized sort of a thing. Okay, I still like that. But if that's not going to be possible, and if multiculturalism is the future and not a melting pot, then we have to get rid of political correctness. We cannot have both. The more diversity, the more chaos. The more diversity, the more, the more close we are to have being like too many rats in a cage. It is not advantageous. But if we can find ways of dealing with it and still be productive, great. But this whole political correct bullshit, that is killing us. It's killing us. It's killing our productivity. It's making workplaces somewhere that someone either fears or is just a reminder that, well, I shouldn't be myself and I should come to work and do this because, you know, it, it, I have to kiss ass. I mean, that's what... That's what a workplace generally is. It's the culture of ass-kissing when you're at work. at most jobs anyway. If people were able to just state how they feel, and as long as the decisions they make don't reflect some sort of prejudice, but people could be as blunt about different stereotypes, you know, I think that would be a good thing. See, that's, that's the real sad thing about this, is we have when we demonize stereotypes, 
that are that represent a culture, then we're actually kind of demonizing that culture. But it's it's something we don't really think about that much. A lot of things that are stereotypes about a culture are some of the main things that represent that culture. And that's that shouldn't be looked at as a bad thing. We've got to stop with this political correctness. We've got to start being able to be honest with each other. Political correctness equals dishonesty. No matter how you want to, no matter how you want to break it apart, you can say that political correctness is about thinking about how your actions affect other people, but it's dishonesty. It's the same thing as someone saying, "Do you like my dress?" and if you really, really can't stand it and you think it looks terrible and you know exactly why, um, do you do the politically correct thing and lie and say, oh, it looks wonderful? Or do you say, it, I don't really like it because it has this and this? It, it's not flattering for that and that. Um, you know, what? what's the better answer? Well, the better answer is the honest one. I don't like giving bullshit answers. I don't like that. I don't like lying. And political correctness is all about lying. It's either lying or stretching truth to infinity. Or has the potential to, anyway. <laughs>